Hey, 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 everybody. This is Phil. And I am Hill. And we are Phil and Hill. Today, we like to start with a random question, and then we will go back to it in the end. Is an elevator a moving room? Think on that. Ponder that. And we will come back to it. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on, everybody? If you're new here, I'm Kirk Hill Jr. This is Philip Rios. Did I say your last name right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you did. Because it'd be really weird if I uh, no, that you just <laughs> totally gave my you just totally gave my government out to the world. I mean, first, uh, <laughs> don't don't just just don't Google us. No, right? it's, uh, it's, but oh uh, yeah, this is. <laughs> Yo, know, it's only our second episode of this season, so we having fun. But um, yeah, this is. Our baby, this is our, our show uh, where we just talk about literally anything we want. Um, last episode, we told you that we were going to come back and talk about Avatar, The Way of Water. Uh, Phil lied to you. <laughs> I did not. Phil said he was going to watch the movie and he didn't. So uh, you're a liar. And, <laughs> you know, brothers had to improvise. So instead, we decided... Let's keep up with a current trend, and um, we are, we saw you people. We literally yep. watched it today. Yeah, um, yeah. Jonah Hill, Lauren London, the beautiful, uh, lovely Lauren London, uh, the equally beautiful Nia Long. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Lala was in there as well. Yeah. And of course, we have Julia Louis Dreyfus mm. and the Honorable. Mm. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, um, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want you want to go first? You want to talk about the movie? Yeah. I, uh, this this movie was a good movie. Um, it it was a good movie. It was a rom com, which I kind of expected from the trailer that I saw. I was like, oh yeah, this is a it's a love story. Um, but this movie is shot, and me and you were talking about this. Me, this movie is shot. Like four or five different ways, like I felt like I was watching like four different things as I'm watching it. Yeah, I, I, there were times where, especially in the beginning, um, it felt shot more like a YouTube, not in YouTube, Netflix, like a show on Netflix, um, because the transitions between scenes have this like. Oh, let's put this graphic here and establish where the next scene takes place, and that's very show transition, not film transition. So that it, it was a little weird for me, um, but I gotta say, for me, the movie was funny. Um, yeah. But it's 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 very much the performances that hold this movie together. Um, it's not like it's not like fall off your seat funny it's no. not um you know and then it tries to go for real like heartfelt at the end um kind of got me but it wasn't like yeah. oh man i feel it you know <laughs> it was yeah, but... it was like all right this is the time to you know wrap the movie up like that's kind of <laughs> how it, that's kind of how it felt for me but it was a good movie um eddie murphy is a blast yeah uh steals every scene he's yeah in. no 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 um still can hold it down i don't understand how they were able to just sit there with him and not laugh yeah yeah it and, couldn't and, and that some, couldn't have been me and there were some other people in there like honestly everybody did a good job like everybody that was in the movie was good um i think i think julia louis dreyfus has the hardest role because the things that she's saying are very yeah. like whoa where are you yeah. going with that and in the wrong, in the wrong hands, way, like yeah. with the wrong actress, it would it it just it wouldn't would be funny. Flat. It would yeah. fall flat. It would be like, all right, like I'm tired of hearing this racist woman talk. But <laughs> Julia Louis Dreyfus just carries herself in this like very funny, sincere way, where it's like, damn, this is really cringy, but it's like funny because it's her, like you know. So that was that was some really great casting. Yeah. Um, and and Jonah Hill, I mean, what 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 can we say? He was putting on his best, like look wise, he was putting on his best, like Bradley Cooper, a star oh, is 100%. born. One hundred percent, like that beard, the the comb yeah, yeah, back, yeah, yeah. like yo man could have been like singing country music, like that's yeah. that's how he looked, like he he. And I was worried at first because I was like, I don't know, like the trailers, 
the trailers didn't sell me on it completely, but I was like, I'll check it out. And when we, it was the cast that grabbed me, yeah, yeah. So then I was, I, like, I looked at that trailer and I was like, oh, okay, a, a, a rom com. And in my head, I was like, how in the world does Jonah Hill and Lauren London make sense? But they make it work. Like the movie, like when I watch it, I'm like, yeah. I, it kind of works. I can, yeah, I can see it. I can yeah. see it. it. It's it's okay. It cuts. <laughs> it cuts where it needs to. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Like I realize that. Like when like when they're doing that montage, like, I, like it cuts to a montage, and I realized that I was like, oh shit, it's cutting, it's cutting through this montage mm-hmm. like where they would normally be uh, talking, um, and like the get to know you stage. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think I think the way they meet was done very well. Yeah. Um that first scene in their car is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh and and it makes total sense. No, definitely, especially so, in today's world. Yeah. Like you could totally like mistake some like somebody for being your Uber driver. Like Yeah, yeah. I, I, which I, is funny in and in and of <laughs> itself. Cause like what you when you think about it, like we grew up and what's like the first thing that your parents tell you to do? Yeah. Not get into cars with strangers. Right. And, the and that's thing, what but, we're doing but today. But the weird thing for me was <laughs> like, because she, cause she said she was lost and then he was going to drive her. Like, spoilers, obviously, if you never seen, seen the movie. We're not going to go into every single scene, but yeah. like brief spoiler for like the first scene. And then plus it's in the trailer, so I'm not really yeah, spoiling yeah, much. Yeah. But I just thought about like, because she said she was on her way somewhere but got lost so he was gonna help her like get there so if you weren't about to get out of the car why was your door unlocked yeah. that's the only thing <laughs> like why was he even able to get in the car yeah like, that's it that's it yeah like you pulled over but like unless you were getting out no why is your door I unlocked like, <laughs> I don't, that, that that was the only it, part it doesn't make sense no but but it, but it served the purpose of getting them to meet so i was like i'm i'm, I'm okay with that yeah um, you, you you yeah they glide over that the, the the most awkward scene is the dinner scene. Yeah, dinner table scene. But is um, so loaded and but it's so almost awkward. it's almost like right in the middle of the movie. So but like, it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 whole point of that scene is so that people, if you don't feel uncomfortable with that conversation, I don't think the the scene does its job. Right. It's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. It's supposed to point out the differences. And like, it's cool because it goes deeper because it's like, it's not just black and white. No. It's black Muslim with white and Jewish. Yeah. So it's like, it's not only cultural, but it's religion and, yeah. and race and like all of that. And that's, that's a hard mix. I, I'm not going to lie. Once I, I heard, once I first saw that, I was like, ah, that's a, that's a loaded scene right there. Oh yeah. But they handled it really well. Like they, I, I can honestly say if put in another, in, Put in the hands of other actors, I think it falls flat. Yeah. Now, I will say, um, I think, for me, I'm assuming, because I, I, don't, I don't know, but the film was written by Jonah Hill himself and Kenya Barris. Now, Kenya Barris um, is the creator of Blackish, you yeah. know, with Anthony Anderson and all that. And then he had made his own show um, on Netflix like a year or two ago uh, called Black AF. And Lenora and I watched it. We did a uh, we did a podcast episode about it um, back in season two. Check out season two whenever you get a chance. Shameless <laughs> plug. I got to. <laughs> so it's all here. It's all here. So in the in the archives, you go find it. But um, when we talked about that show, uh, we felt like when he made that show, it, it it every episode just hit really really hard on the racial parts. Yeah. And sometimes it's not always funny. It, it got to a part where, it got to a point where it's like, this shit is kind of dragging. Like, yeah. we get it. Like, I get, like, you're a black man, you're rich, you're dealing with like, living in a white neighborhood now and you're trying to like, you know, hold on to your black identity. Like, it was a lot. And sometimes yeah. I was like, who is this really for? Is this for black people? Is this for white people? Like, who's your target audience? And it wasn't really, it wasn't always clear to me. And, mm-hmm. Um, I feel like in the writing of this movie, whenever Jonah Hill is like riffing and doing his thing, yeah. his his dialogue, all of that seems very, this is Jonah Hill yes. writing. Yeah. But all of the other stuff, tense racial is stuff other, is, is, feels is, very is Kenya, much like that's Kenya, Kenya yeah. writing that part. And 
you feel the two tones. Yeah. Because whenever Jonah's scenes are going, especially like... It feels like a comedy movie. Yeah. Like, especially in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah. It's like before he meets Lauren London. Yeah. The beginning of the movie is very much, all right, this is like a regular Jonah Hill comedy. Like, it's mad fucking funny. Yeah. Like, his reactions to everything yeah. is like key. And then once the mixing of the families comes in and there's these That's tense when... moments and like the friends are making comments and the moms are making comments, it's almost like, do people really talk this yeah. way? Like, what, like yeah, yeah. there's a shift. Yeah, there's a shift in tone. You can you can tell. And he also directed the movie, and I don't know. I mean, he's a good writer, and he comes up with good concepts. And I think him and Jonah Hill did this well. like did this well. Yeah, they came together. Like, I'm not bashing the movie, but there's, I feel like as a director, there are certain places where he can like kind of grow. Like for me, I think the movie's a little too long. Cause it's like yeah. it's almost two hours long, yeah. And for a comedy, a romantic comedy, a rom com, definitely with, like an hour, yeah, like blending, yeah, like blending of families, ninety minutes, ninety five, yeah. Like that's your sweet spot. It's, it's right definitely there. So, not something that I'm used to, right? And like, you feel the length because it's like, oh man, these jokes are like going, yeah. And it kind of turns into like sequence after sequence, sequence after sequence, sequence. Yeah. and it's like, okay, like it's a lot of repetition, yeah. Because then it's like. Like when the like I said, when the families meet, it's in the middle of the movie. So you're like, all right, this is tense, and then it just becomes more cringe scenes. Yeah, and you're like, it's definitely like okay. I feel like we've already made a point because like the especially with the mom, oh. like the mom was awkward in the beginning of the movie. So, so for her to keep making more, these yeah, awkward yeah, jokes, she's still like, there. Yo, but this and that's why I said if it wasn't Julia Louis Dreyfus acting, it would get like really yeah. annoying. I'd be like, yeah. all right, can we move on from the mom, like? Because the dad didn't get a lot of like, no. stuff. Like he kept like they kept dragging that exhibit joke. Yeah. Like because yeah. at first because in the trailer it's mad funny. Exhibit had braids. <laughs> like that shit is mad funny. But then exhibit pops up like continuously throughout the movie. And I'm like, all right, can and we, it's his, he can move on. It's from his the one exhibit. stick. Yeah. It's his and one I'm like, stick. I'm like the, like the one moment. Like, like the one moment that gave that they gave him substance is in that dinner scene. Other than that, mm-hmm. he really doesn't have any any dialogue other yeah. than like he, realistically he's like in four scenes yeah and and it's kind of the same with Nia Long like Nia Long doesn't get yeah, to do much either if I'm being honest with you she might be she has less to she has less lines than she, the white dad yeah uh, if I'm not mistaken I gotta go back and watch that but I wanna say her only lines are in that one scene when they're in she the, makes like these little the comments she makes like these little comments in each. And I feel like she. In, I feel like they could have no given real... her a little bit more to work with. And right. If not for just that one scene, they could have given her something. Right. Because like they could have did a scene with like her and Lauren London, like just yeah. just just her and her daughter having a conversation, or yeah. her and Eddie Murphy, or even her and the the white mom. Like they could have had a conversation with yeah. each other, like mom to mom, getting to know each other. Like this, and and that's the thing. I feel like, I feel like. Once you got through the initial, like, all right, we're two families from two different backgrounds. This is awkward. You have to kind of start shifting less from guess who's coming to dinner and more meet the parents, like yeah. more meet the fuckers, like have yes. the families yes. actually blend. Yes. And that's how and, a movie works well. Yeah. When, when you I, start I think to the movie the... could have benefited more from having the families interact a yes, little bit more. Yes, because it makes it more funny, too. Yeah. Instead of having, like, you literally only had, like, if you really be honest, the focus be between Jonah Hill, Lauren London, and Eddie Murphy. If I'm really being honest, most of the movie is Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's it's it's... Like, yeah, Jonah and Lauren London have their moments, but if you really, once Jonah Hill is introduced to the father, it's over after that. Now yeah. it's like he's in every scene. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not... And I get it. It's not, Eddie Murphy. Like, of course yeah. you're going to have him in as much as you can. Yeah. But it's like, if you have a full cast, make full use of yeah. that cast. Yeah. Like, even the little sister and the little brother, like... They were in they two were in, scenes. Yeah, like they're in the beginning, they're like and in, they're funny in the beginning. Yeah, and then they just 
disappear until the like, end. Like, are they even in the dinner? Yeah. Like, they're, they're not in the dinner scene. Like, yeah. w- like why not have he, the? He, why the, not have the, the brothers? Son, yeah, the son like, is in the club scene, and and they literally just look at each other. Yeah, like him and Eddie Murphy. Like, it's just, it's a good movie, but. Honestly, the focal points are Jonah Hill, Lauren London, and Eddie Murphy. Right. And realistically, honestly, that's probably what you're going to tune in for. If you see the trailers, you're going to tune in for those for for those reasons. Absolutely. Oh, what Eddie Murphy? What? Yeah, I'm tuning in. Who wouldn't? Yeah. But at the same token, you're right. When you put the Meet the Fockers uh, analogy, it works because you got to see two people that were totally different mm-hmm. where you have this type A family that he's so like right. about his business and he doesn't fuck around and then you have type B who is just relaxed, chill, yeah. wants to dr- you know, smoke and that, and that drink. movie is funny. Oh, like, that movie I'm telling you, Meet I, the Fockers is I, I think a I great like, movie. I think I like Meet the Fockers more than Meet the Parrots because because oh. both families are in it. Like yes, I feel like it, you it, get be- you get the best of both. Yeah, now Little Fockers is not good. No, no, I, no, I, no, I, don't, no. I don't like the third movie. <laughs> I don't like the third movie at all. But, no, 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 um, no. The, the first two are really good. Yeah, um, and I, 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 yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, just because, like, again. We're dads. Yeah. We both have daughters. And we're both men of color. So yeah. um, if if your daughter... Because I'm thinking about it, I'm watching a movie. I'm like, if my daughter came home with a white Jewish man, how how would I feel? How would, how would Lenora feel? Like, how would we how would we navigate that situation? Yeah. Now, obviously, it wouldn't be as comedic. Like, I'm not, I'm not Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you know? But um, I... I and I'm not Muslim, so there, that yeah. aspect wouldn't be there. But I, I, I do wonder how I'd navigate that situation. Like as a dad, have you ever had that conversation, like with your wife or whatever? Like you know, because your daughter's older than my daughter. My daughter's just yeah, she's you know, about just, to be she's just a baby. Be seven. So yeah, so um, it's it's funny because I I do think about stuff like that. I I think a lot. Like my brain doesn't shut up, but. Me too. It's to my detriment. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really it's really bad. But um yeah, it's it's definitely a thought, but I, I I honestly don't look at it like I don't look at it like somebody who would be like, Oh man, like if she brought home this I'd be like, No. Yeah. I honestly honestly like if I'm being honest, I think as long as she is happy I'll be okay. And I think that's part I think that's I'm I'm because I don't want to judge nobody off first interaction. Yeah. Like if she brought home a, a boy, I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm gonna be nice. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be like, yo, you hurt my daughter like on steroids or some shit. Yeah. Be so angry, like yeah. no, I'm not I'm just gonna be like, hey, hello, and just you know, get to know the young man and whoever he is, and just make sure that as long as he keeps her happy, I'm okay. I'm cool. I'm I'm never gonna. My rules are literally just keep my daughter happy and don't put your hands on her. Yeah. If you do that, we're good. Yeah. We're fine. Otherwise, you'll find out. Yeah. Because for me, it's like, like, cause if his family, if they, if my daughter brought home a guy, you know, whatever he. Whether he was white or not, or Jewish or not, like if she brought home a guy and he was cool, then that's where we start off. Like if you're cool, I'm cool. But if you give me a reason to not be cool, then you know I'm gonna address it. I'm gonna address it to you, man to man, and I'm also address it to my daughter because it's like I need her to know what I see. No, and maybe she doesn't see what I see, and maybe I don't see what she sees. Yeah, but you know it's all about like that communication there, but. Um, if his family is crazy, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'd have a conversation with my daughter. I'm like, yo, I get it. He's great, but like, that's a lot. And well, then do I- you want to deal with that a lot? Because it's like, because and I'm learning even even with my situation. Like, families on two different sides have two different ways of going, going about, about things, things. and. The blending of that isn't always easy. So, you know, and that's just with 
my family and they're not that diverse. So if you add in all the extra things that separate people, it, it, it it's, it's 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 a tough thing to navigate. And I would just, you know, again, like you said, I want my daughter to be happy. So if if anything about that stresses her out, I would tell her like, yo, you got to talk to your man about this. And there's something that the two of y'all need to, you know, yeah. f- figure out. Yeah. Because, you know, because it's hard, because you can't, it's hard to make families change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, one side of the family isn't going to suddenly s- unilaterally stop being a certain way. No. Because the partner does things differently. No. no right? it was, Not it was, at all. You know, it's like, if anything, they're going to rebel against Yeah, that. you're probably going to double down. So yeah, it's yeah. like, it, it's, that's that's tough. So, um, you know, I, I I don't know. And but for me, yeah. If, if if my daughter's being treated well, and if he himself is like a gentleman, then you know I'm with it. And I, I, granted, I might have a little Eddie Murphy in me. I might I might I might toy with him a little bit. I might have some fun. <laughs> I don't I don't know how I don't know how I'm gonna be. I have a lot of years, thank God, before I you know to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. But um. Well, here's well you, you know, I mean, yes, yeah, I'm I'm closer to that goal than yeah, you she'll, are. She'll be there in a few years, at yeah. least at least with crushes or whatever. Yeah, so. she's yeah. I well, okay, okay, so like for instance, me, I am I, I I'm one in whatever the number is. Yeah, but my family, I'm not close to my family. I'm gonna be honest with you, I I look at it like I don't have a family. Mm. Right Un- until like I'm married with mine, yeah. So now I'm integrated into the family by marriage, and it's a it's a it's a great thing. But it's also like I, so for instance, her father. <clears throat> he did the thing that I said I wouldn't do, which is like grill you. Yeah. Do and it's like none of that is necessary. I'm gonna be honest. It's it's really not. Like you just get to know the person. It's not hard. I get it. This is your kid. This is the one that you love. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure that she's protected. But at the same time, it the grilling it just seems unnecessary. Yeah. To me, it always did. Like anything that I could say to you or pr- like threaten you with, it it just seems pointless. Unless I feel like I need to. Yeah. But, like, I'm I I came I came into that uh, relationship, and immediately I was judged off that. And it's not like I sold I I didn't sell drugs. I'm not a you know I'm not I'm not a bad person. I'm right. Like, and I'm not saying people who sell drugs are bad. I'm just saying I don't give off that. Right. So I, I, you know, I don't have a, a record. I'm, I'm, for all intents and purposes, squeaky clean. Right. So like when the heat is on you, you're like, what? This is doesn't this for? make sense. Right. Right. Like I can understand if I if I did any of that and you treated me like this, then that would make sense. Right. You giving that to me, but that's like me doing that to a kid who gets straight A's in school mm-hmm. and just likes my daughter. Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. I, I I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be like, well, you know what? If you hurt my daughter, I'm gonna cut your dick off. Like that that doesn't yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that, that'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, so like if if a kid comes to you like that, like she brings home a kid like that, mm-hmm. like his he's for all intents and purposes, he comes from a broken home. And he's honestly just looking for a family to find to be integrated in. All right. And he he does he takes all the necessary steps. He tries to talk to you, he ingratiates himself with you. He tries to get to know you better. Same thing with everybody else. How would you handle that situation? Yeah. Do you think that you would be uh, a a hard a hard guy in that moment or would you give him the benefit of the doubt and say, "Hey, this kid is actually trying." Well, knowing me, I'd probably give him the benefit of the doubt. But then when I, you know, and then I guess I wouldn't want to be that da- that dad because like again, me watching movies all my life. I guess I've always been prepared for that. Like with any girl that I was ever yeah. gonna be serious with, if their dad was like 
gonna be tough and like a hard ass, I'd always like tense up and be like, okay, I already know this is coming. Um, luckily for me, most times the dad has been absent, kind of cool. Oh. Not, whoa, <laughs> shit, shit, <laughs> damn, we going there? No, no, no. no. Most <laughs> most of the dads that I've come across in my relationships in the past have been pretty decent with me once they got to know me. But um, yeah, and I mean, there were, yes, if we're being honest, yes, there were some absent ones, but it wasn't all absent. God <laughs> nah, damn, bro. Was a big ass boss. And I was like, okay. Nah, nah, nah. It was, it was, it, it's just, you know, uh, they, they're, 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 they're cool people. And I, yeah. and, and personally, I, I think because I'm a cool person, it allows people to relax a bit and be like, oh, yeah. well, you know, he's not so bad. Well, listen, like... like for and me, honestly, for me, the, the hardest time I had was with one of my girlfriend's mothers. They they were kind of like really tough on me. And I was like, why? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah, no. With with me, it just... It just uh, uh, yeah. But in any event... Um, my co-host just stepped away for a few, um, but yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna get into some stuff in a few. Uh, when he gets back, we're gonna talk superheroes. Uh, one of my favorite uh, things to talk about and converse about. Um, Yes, Brother Kirk, he is back. Um, what you say about me? No, no, I just said <laughs> when you get back, we'll talk about some things. But, and, and I'm going to say this one last thing, and then we'll get to the next thing that we're going to talk about. But, like, for, for me, so, like, it was weird because, like, I'm, I'm with mine for eight years. Mm-hmm. Me and her father didn't get to where we are until year five, year six, like to where we're actually having dialogue yeah, and talking. Yeah. yeah, and even then, it's still there's still a stalemate there. Mm. Um, See, I couldn't, I, I couldn't do that. It's, it's no, it, it, it's definitely a challenging thing, and yeah. and, and you know, like I. I swallow it because you know I'm I'm in this shit. I'm not gonna go nowhere. So I'm I'm like, let's 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 do it. Yeah. You want to play ball? We can play ball. Let's let's go. Yeah. And you know, like we we have our ups and downs, but like yeah, like I, that's definitely not ideal for me. Mm-hmm. Like I I want to have a relationship with my daughter's man within the first time from the time I meet him. Till however long. Yeah. I don't want there to be a stalemate because then it's like there's awkward moments there where like I don't know what to say. Yeah. And the same thing with him. He he doesn't know how to verbalize things like that. So it's like there's little things like that. Whereas like if I come in from the beginning with her uh man and I put forth the effort to get to know this young man and talk to him and uh, you know it, it, it'll be better the relationship will be stronger by the time we hit year whatever year yeah um but yeah, yeah. um all right any well before we go to the next thing any last few things about the movie you want to say before we move on i i enjoy i enjoyed the movie um like i said the only jarring thing i'm gonna be honest with you that was really jarring for me was like the four different styles that it was shot because I told you that I it reminded me of like a music video yeah. slash um I forgot the Kevin Hart show that he he has with Nick Cannon and all his boys. It's shot like that. It's oh, shot yeah. like a reality show. And it just was like a bit jarring because I'm used to usually movies not really shot four different types of ways it's u- yeah. usually a movie that sets in on a tone and it stay that tone yeah it won't really move on that tone unless like there's something else on the outside yeah there were a few stylistic changes uh throughout the film but uh, 
Yeah. I it think- works. It just is jarring for yeah. me. I, I don't. I, I can't oh, I think for me. I think for me. Um, again, in terms of like the content, um, I think. I think sometimes as as time goes on and as culture changes, and we're very much a trend culture. Yeah. Um, I think with movies that talk about topics, it's very easy to just make a script off of let's check the boxes. One hundred percent. Like. Like the sister, right? For one, for one instance, just again, a, a, bit, oh, of, a bit of a bit of spoilers I, here. I, I get what you're coming from. But like with the sister, right? Yeah. The sister, like we said, the sister's barely in the movie. She's li- yeah. So like in three scenes, but like that first when scene, they introduce her, she's she's lesbian. She's, yeah. And the parents have an awkward description yeah. of her sexuality. Yeah. And then it's never brought up. No, again. you not never at see all. her flirt with another nope. girl. You never see her talk to another nope. girl. It's almost like, a, and it, it's like. If you if she's not gonna be a major part of the movie, why even why say address it? it? I guess it's I again. You said check the box mark, checks the check the boxes like uh, she's vocalizing it so that way we're aware. But it's also like it's there's no point to vocalize that if she's not in any of the scenes. Right, there's nothing really she does t- of substance. She right. says like three lines in each of the scenes that she's in. And she's just reacting to her parents. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. It's not really anything like crazy. Like at first, at first, what I thought was going to happen, which would have been kind of cool because like how would the mother have dealt with that when they go to the bachelorette party? Yeah. I thought she was going to like flirt with one of yeah. Lauren London's friends yeah. and been like, oh, I'm kind of feeling this person or whatever. Mm -hmm. How would you navigate that situation? You know what I mean? Like it's, that's real though. I think that would have added to her, her character as well. Right. And it may, and you know, you mentioned it. So it's like, and then like, give us a little bit of something of that. Right. And then even in, even in the beginning of the movie, when like Jonah Hill was talking about like the doctor, and he was like, oh, the doctor's being a little, oh, weird, a little that, weird with me. That was definitely... So then you brought it up, and it was just like a thing. And it's funny, but it's like, okay, now we're having that, that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just felt very much like, okay. There's a lot of different conversations. These are the things that cause movie. tension in our society. Yeah. Let's make sure we talk about them. Yeah. Instead of just making it organically, what yeah. would these characters yeah. talk about? What would yeah. these families talk like, about? Like, literally, with the doctor, it's literally like a... a Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Let's go into the bathroom, drop your pants so I can check your... And it's like, where where does that come from? Right. What? And then, like, the mother comes in and she's awkward. And then it's like, oh, you you just have a whole bunch of jump-ins. Right. And it was just where... It doesn't feel... You're right. It doesn't feel organic to where it should, like, naturally be a conversation piece. Said, oh, this is a topic? Well, let's throw that in the script. This is a topic? Let's throw that in the script. Yeah. And it's like... Uh, Definitely throwing darts at the board there. Right. And it's like, make comedy around the character, not around yeah. the topics. Yeah. Because then, like I said, it just becomes like a checkoff box. Like, all right, we talked about this. We talked about that. We talked about this. We talked about that. But just make it natural for the character. Yeah. So that's like the only, only real thing for me. But other than that, the movie is funny. Y'all should check it out. It's yeah. on Netflix now. It, it's a good movie. Um, and, you know, let us know what you think about it, um, you know, somewhere. I'm sure it is. On one of these platforms, you can yeah, drop a leave, comment, I guess. Yeah, leave comments. Let us know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pivoting. Not too far from there. We have a ranking. Um, oh, yes. We're doing rankings. Yes. We're talking about movies. So, let's talk about some of our favorite movies. And specifically, we're talking about... We're talking about Batman. Batman movies. Because, of course, we're talking about Batman movies. <laughs> we referenced Batman last episode. Um, you know, we do this thing where we joke and talk to each other in Bane voice. It's oh. like fucking hilarious. Even though we can't stand that movie. No. The, the, the Dark Knight is, Rises is so, like, frustrating. Yeah, the movie is the movie is what it is. Um, but, but we love it. Yes. Yes, we do. We love the voice. I love the insanity. Yeah, we we just want to blow things up. <laughs> but I think Harley, I think that Harley Quinn uh, cartoon nailed it. Like I, I love yeah. that they kept that voice. I Harley Quinn HBO Max. Thank you for putting me on to that show. Oh my goodness! I had never checked it out until you showed me those band <laughs> clips. And I was like, oh, this show is hilarious. Yeah. No. And I love that they kept the Tom Hardy voice. Oh like, yes. That's, 
That's hilarious. Yes. Like, the fact that they play <laughs> into that. No, 100%. It, it works. It works. Um, so, ranking. the ranking that I wanted to put forth in front of us is set up in three different categories. Okay. And between uh, five Batman movies. So, um, it's replayability, score, and cinematography. Mm. How it's shot. So, um, have you watched the Batman yet? No. Oh. But I've seen enough. But I have seen enough of it where I'm like, oh man, like this is an amazing movie. Okay. But uh, I haven't seen the the whole movie. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just because I don't have HBO Max, so uh, <laughs> I keep telling you, get them trials. Yeah, yeah. Get them trials. <laughs> it's really the only thing holding Those me back. Those things come in and, and and and. I'd have to I'd have to watch it in parts because I don't have a, no it's definitely uh, I don't have a three hour block in my day to watch the Batman <laughs> as much as I'd love that but, no 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 it's so I'd have to watch it in parts you, you can too it's it's, it's I will, definitely a movie you can watch in I will parts. get I will get to it but I I or I can tell you off the bat um <laughs> bat no pun intended yeah. no pun intended nice. but I can tell you <laughs> from nice. from jump that um. If we're talking about cinematography, I'm pretty sure you and I would both put the Batman oh, at number I'm one. The Batman yeah, at number away. one when it comes straight to cinematography, because I mean, straight away. For one, Matt Reeves is just a freaking oh, genius, and like the way he directs film is so crazy. But whoever the cinematographer on that movie, oh. it, he's he's a boss. Because listen, I hope is, it got nominated. I'm sure it did. I'm pretty sure it did. It got nominated for three things. I know sound is one of them. Um, special effects is another. And I gotta check what the other one is. Cause but cinematography Bat- should be one of them. Because the Batman is a beautiful movie. Oh my! I mean, just goodness. for the just for the um, the light scene at the end, like him walking through the water oh. and like leading the people yeah, they've out. They've got they've the, got like, that tone set. That just that scene alone is like crazy. And then when him and Selena are like standing on top of the building the with the shots, the way the the way the city looks, like the way this, that sun. Yeah, that's... the shots alone in this movie, you could pause at any moment in this movie mm-hmm. and go, "Damn, that's a great shot." Yeah, and I've watched this movie like eight times so, since it has dropped. Since we're talking about it, I guess we should just rank cinematography first. Then, uh, well, okay, obviously, for both of us, the yeah. Batman would be at number one. Yeah, the Batman is okay. Number so one. for number number two, I had to really think about. I, I really had to think about this because. After this, I'm gonna be honest with you. It goes the Nolan trilogy. After yeah. the Batman, it goes the Nolan trilogy, and then to be honest, for me, out of the three, even though it's the oldest, I actually like the cinematography in Batman. Oh, Begins you the most. Yes. Oh, we're, we're the same on that. Yeah, okay. we're the same. On yeah, that. I, I don't know. Two, Batman Begins just two. shows a really gritty Gotham, <sighs> and I'm just like I. I, I bangs with that. It's, like, just, it's just the it's way it looks. It's done really good. Yeah. And it's and I sat there and I was like, no, I, I really dig the way that Batman Begins is shot. Like it's not it's not as polished as the other ones. Right, ones. right. But the way that it's shot lends itself to mm-hmm. the strength of the shoot. Yeah. Like, so it, it's definitely a movie of that time. Mm. But Yes, it, it it in this instant it works for that. Movie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah, for three, for three. Um, even if I don't like this movie, I will say it is it is shot strong, and it is Dark Knight Rises. I have Dark Knight Rises as three because it is shot. It, it, yeah, it's, it's shot. It is shot really good. Um. It, I, yeah, that's. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I think that's the the best thing I could say about that movie. Like, I'm kind of cheating because like that that movie is like, Dark Knight Rises. I, I'd ha- I'd want to say Dark Knight Rises is three, but just out of because it's of it's so much of its time in the time period, and it just stood out the way that it did. Yeah, I for number three, I'm gonna have to go Batman eighty nine okay. because to me, like I feel. I feel Batman Returns 
digs into the Tim Burton aesthetic harder because okay. he had more creative control. But Batman 89, because it doesn't feel like a Tim Burton movie yet. It doesn't. It, it I think that's kind of why. Returns I think that's kind of why I like it better. Batman Returns feels more like a Tim Burton movie than Batman 89. Right. But I think that's why I like 89's aesthetic better. Yeah. Because it's him still working with the yeah. studio and kind of yeah. like figuring it out. And I think, again, the way Gotham looks yeah. in 89. I like the look of Gotham in 89 more than in Returns. Returns. Well, side note. Yeah. Side note. Would you classify Batman Returns as a Christmas movie? I would. I would too. Yeah. Batman okay. Returns is absolutely a Christmas movie. <laughs> it's literally in the in theme Christmas. of the movie. Like, <laughs> there's three Christmas lightings in the movie itself. And then like there's, there's snow everywhere. They're talking about this Christmas season. It literally ends with Alfred saying Merry Christmas. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on. Like, yeah. it, it, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> it's a tragic Christmas yes. movie. Yes, yes. But it is a Christmas movie. it is movie. a Christmas movie. All right. Um, so three, you have Batman 89. Yeah. So for number, f- so my number four would be The Dark Knight Rises. Okay. Okay. So what, um, what's your number four? My number four would be uh, Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. My number four would be Dark Knight. Again, I, like I said, it goes the uh, it would be Batman and then the Nolan trilogy. But the way that I have it, it's like backwards. Mm. Um, I do love the Dark Knight. Damn. The Dark Knight is shot really, really well. Mm. Um, <laughs> it 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 is. It's not shot better than Dark Knight Rises, but I think that's because of technology and that we got like in four years we have yeah. gotten advanced. Um, but Dark Knight, Dark Knight is definitely a mm. a good a good and well shot movie, especially with those shot uh, the Joker shots alone. Oh yeah, the Joker shots alone are yeah. are wonderful. Um, yeah. So the Dark okay. So then if we're doing that, um, I do love the Dark Knight, but uh, and it's crazy that it's not on my cinematography list. My top five cinematography, but I'm gonna be honest with you. My number five, and it's gonna be shocking for you because I don't like this movie. But my my number five is actually Batman Forever. Oh. Joel Schumacher, and again, he's the director, not the cinematographer. Yeah, but he did his thing with that movie. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. like it's like just like Tim Burton. Like Batman Returns is a Tim Burton movie. Forever and Batman and Robin, but. F- Batman Forever is a Joel Schumacher film. Like yeah, yeah. it's very much I'm digging into my aesthetic. Let's go yeah. with the glow let's up. Let's go with it. Let's go with the neon lights. Yep. Let's 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 yep. go with the the liveliness. Like everything yeah. feels different. Even those flashback scenes where it's deep blues and it's the slow motion, like Bruce the young Bruce running with that well, here's book. The thing, and works. then that red book is so red yes. that it makes it stand out to you. Yep. Um the way the Bat Cave looks. The Bat Cave looks epic yeah. in Batman Forever. Oh, Honestly, yeah. I think out of, the out, of, out of those four films, those first four, the two Burton and the two Schumacher, I think the Bat Cave looks the best in Forever. Yeah. Like I think Batman Forever's yeah. Bat Cave is awesome. Yeah. Um the suits, the way the suits uh, are are awesome. Um, oh. That the the ending scene when they're running in front we're of not, the we're not the, getting the, into the, su- the, the the bat signal. You know what? Let's like the way bonus. that the way that film ends. Let's do a bonus. That's crazy. Like I love this. Like the cinematography of Batman Forever is low key slept on. But you got me. That's that's number five. You got for me. me. That's number five as well. Oh, you changing your list? <laughs> no, 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 no. That was my number five. Oh, okay, okay. No, no. Gotcha. Batman Forever is it is drastically beautiful. And that's where it's like it works. Yeah, yeah. Like because it just his neon lights and everything. A lot of people wouldn't the Riddler, like the Riddler's it. lair. Oh my goodness! But it works yeah. though. Like yeah. when when Riddler comes through comes through the Batcave and you get to see him run through it. Oh yeah. It's like oh shit! Like mm-hmm. and then you get to see the 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 mansion. You get to see uh, Wayne Manor. Yeah. Even that is like oh shit! Like. We never really got a a look into it, like mm-hmm. so it works, like and the shots are really really good. Yeah, they are. Um, they are. They there's some amazing shots. They are shot. They are really really 
good shots. I, I didn't really... Even when the Batmobile's, like, driving up yeah. the wall and the fire behind yep. it. Like, yeah. The, the, the cinematography in Batman Forever yeah. is highly slept on. When, when, when he's, when he's uh, grappling... When he's grappling with uh the, on the helicopter, yes. When he grab when he when he cuts the wire mm-hmm. and he's on the thing still, that shot is amazing to me. Yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, that's good. Yeah. Um. Okay. So cinematography down. Yeah, we did cinematography. All right. All right. What would you like to do? Sound or replayability? I think we need to end with replayability. Okay. So sound. Sound wise. Oof. Well, when we say sound, like, because remember, it's like sound design is just like the, the background noises and yeah. whatever. But like the score is like the music of the film. So are we talking about the score? Or are we talking about just sound in general? Oh, you know what? Okay, we could do score. We could do score. Oh, yeah. Because if we're going score, we I'm not going to lie. We could do score. We could do score. All right. So if we're going score, I'll go first this time. So for okay. score, number one, to me, number one is Batman 89. That, like, that just is the theme of Batman, and and what's and what's and, and my and my greatest argument for Batman eighty nine being number one is that Batman the animated series is one of the greatest depictions of Batman oh, ever, yes. and the theme of that is taken from the yep. eighty nine movie. Yep. So I just think as soon as that film starts, like when the Warner Brothers logo goes up. And the way that that music comes in, and then just you just like Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton, like the way yeah. the score builds up, and then it just goes, Duh! and then Batman. I'm just like, I'm in. Like you're yeah, locked yeah, yeah. into the movie you got immediately me. just from the music. Yeah. So I, 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 89 has to be number one for me. Okay. Uh, my number one is actually Returns. Ah, okay. It's actually. I respect returns. it. I respect. I, I respect. I, it. I love. Listen, Tim Burton has never let me down with his sound. I, if I'm being honest with you, well, Danny, Danny I, Elfman is a genius. I man. do love. I do love it, and it's just Batman Returns hits the same way that it hits '89 hits for you. Yeah, the beginning hits for me, and it's like, and and let's not forget the sound continues. When the movie is starting, true. So he's fighting dudes while the movie is still, while the sound is still going. Yeah, and it's like, oh, the returns has the choir in it. Yes, the cho- the choral ah. voices. Yeah, oh, yeah, and it, it starts off so creepy. Yes, with the, with the penguin. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't argue with that because it's almost they're almost one and the same. Yeah, no, I'm giving it to uh, returns on that one. Mm. Okay, ahead. so my number two, I want, I want to be, I want to say returns is my number two, but I'm, that's not my number two. Returns is my number three. Mm-hmm. Skipping ahead, but um, my number two, um, and it's also gonna sound, it's gonna be a little, like again, I don't really like this movie, but I'm not gonna lie, my number two is probably The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> The score for the Dark Knight. It's wild that me and you are yeah. so insane. The, the, like, the, the score for ooh. the Dark Knight Rises, like it's so good. It moves me. I don't know oh what it my is. Like goodness, that from the moment that Bane. Hit yeah, Bane's. The stage, yeah, Bane's theme is like. Oh, it's chilling. Even in the trailers, like the 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 theme for the for the Dark Knight Rises is just like yeah, because it just adds everything. And then when the when they're chanting the 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 rise, <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Yeah, like I'm just like, yo, <laughs> this is this is crazy. Um yeah, I, the Dark Knight Rises is just like when it goes for like this is the last one and we're going all out for the last one, I feel that. Yeah. Like the score for yeah. the Dark Knight Rises is doesn't epic. disappoint there. Yeah. yeah. All right. So even even what? even Catwoman's theme like that. Like that that yeah, piano. Yeah. Like I'm like I fucks with that. Like that's that's dope. So Yeah. Yeah. Um Okay. So like I, and like I said, my three is Batman Returns. So what's your what's your okay. number three? Um, my number three. My number three would be Batman Forever. The score for Batman Forever is dope. Batman Forever's the soundtrack is amazing, dun, and it dun, has dun, dun, my dun, favorite dun, song. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, and it has my favorite song at the end of that movie. Oh, Kiss from of me. all time. <laughs> Soundtrack too, yeah. Kiss from a Rose is my favorite song 
of all time. Yeah, Batman Forever gets points for having probably the best soundtrack of all the films. Because like Prince's Prince's Batman album is iconic, but Batman Forever soundtrack. Oh my goodness. Is is pretty dope. Yes. Brandy's on there. Oh my goodness. Kiss from a Rose is on there. Um, I think U 2s on there. Or my, that might be Batman and Robin. But yeah. It, it the the sound it just works. It just works. The music works. The theme when they're running away from the 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 the, uh, the, the light. Oh, at the end yes. of the movie? Yeah, that music is oh fire. Oh my goodness. That music is Anytime fire. Anytime I grew up and I watched that movie, when that came on, I felt like I was a part of it. Nah, yeah, no. Batman Forever's ending is so fire. Oh, I love the way that movie ends. I never get sick of yeah. them running towards the screen. It's so epic. Oh, it's so epic. And it, it, and it's, and it's so simple. Well. It's so simple. Yes. Like, Cause it's like there's silhouettes running. Yeah, like it's like okay, okay. Who, knew we, who knew we needed that? Slow motion. And then Batman from one end, Robin from the other. Like, and that's what I hate about Batman and Robin. Cause in Batman and Robin's ending, it's not slow motion. They're just running. No, it's and it's, it's so Batman weird. And Robin and, and Batgirl. And, Batgirl. and it would have been, but it's cool. But it, it just it doesn't hit the same because uh, it's uh, not slow motion. Well, the fact that in Forever it's so slow mo. It's yeah, like it hits. yeah, it, it yeah. hits because it fits the tone of the movie. Yeah. Also, we're not talking about Batman, Batman and Robin. But. The only thing that I will give to Batman and Robin, and obviously this man has done terrible things and we're not addressing that, but Gotham City by R. Kelly is a beautiful song. Oh. I do love that song. I'm, I'm not, not going to lie. lie. I, sat there, <laughs> I, I listened to that and I'm like, shit, he did his thing. I like, do love that song. Damn. Look. That's the only thing I'll say for Batman yeah, and no, Robin. Yeah, no, no, no. We but, don't condone um, him. But yes, that song is, is a great song. Yeah. Um, um, so where what number are we at? <laughs> we're at number four. That was your okay. That was so, my number three. So my yeah, returns was my three. So then my number four, my number four is probably Batman Forever. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah, just because of all the same reasons that you mentioned. But um, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Um. Okay, number five. Number five is probably <sighs> number five. <laughs> well, can number I say five mine? is probably Batman and Robin for me. Really? Oh, number okay. five is probably Batman and Robin for me. Okay, it is similar. It is similar to Forever in that, but I'm gonna be honest. That club, the the club scene. Where po- Poison Ivy is first introduced. Yeah. That sultry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sultry stuff. And even when she's around, but she's not like Poison Ivy. She's just, you know, a regular person. Like at the governor's, uh, at, at the ball when they're, they're, they're doing the little party together. Yeah. And they, and they have her little theme playing that. Like, mm-hmm. I always like that. Like it works. Like as a subtlety. I got you. Um, I'll take it. I I I, I like I listen. Like, yeah. The movie is what it is, but I'll give it to the I'll give it to the soundtrack. Okay. Um hmm, me, I think Yeah, my number five is the Dark Knight. Cause okay. just that, that little like that numbing like sound like whenever, whenever Joker is Joker on screen. <laughs> and even even that um You wanna know when the theme hits me? At the end, when Two Face is like oh, doing his theme, when, when he's doing his speech, Two Face's theme is so hard. Right yeah, now. like when he, that that music at the end is so tense because he's like he has the gun at the pointed at the sun and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, we were supposed to. You thought we could be decent men in an indecent time. I love that scene. Yeah, it's like, such a it's such a good scene. And then when, like, I remember to this day, and now I'm gushing about the movie itself, <laughs> which is why. But see, but that's why. Okay, when we get to the next ranking, that's why you're gonna know where my Dark Knight r- ranks in there. But for me, th- that ending is so powerful, and the music only helps it. It, it. it enhances that scene even more. Yeah. But I remember even as like a kid, because like Dark Knight came out when I was what thirteen. Yeah, yeah, thirteen years old. Yeah. I was so too. I'm like I'm watching that, and the first time I watched that movie, I remember it hitting me when. Two Face was like, "Yo, the Joker chose me," 
And Batman's like, because you were the best of us. And I'm like, whoa, because you that hurt. That was, I felt that. Because and I'm it's like, the truth. You, yeah. had a, you had a cop who was dealing with corruption in the force. So he couldn't stand out into the crowd. Yeah. You had Batman who was outlawed. So he's a vigilante. So he can't stand out in, in the daylight. And the only person who is doing good in daylight it's is Harvey. Harvey. Yeah. You literally are the best of the three. Yeah. Yeah, Which that, made you the easiest to descend into darkness. All I had to do was take away the yeah. one that you cared for most. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But that scene, that scene is just so powerful to me. And because of the music in that scene, I feel it. And when and when Gordon gives his speech at the end, when he's like, you know, he's not our hero. He's like a watchful protector. You know, all that stuff. The Dark Knight. The way the theme yep. comes in and he's at that part, yeah, into the light. And you want to talk about cinematography? That's one of the best yes. ending shots of a yeah. movie yeah. ever. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Like that movie is beyond amazing. So <laughs> yeah, Dark Knight. Dark the, the score for the Dark Knight has to be in my top five somewhere. So okay. I'm a, I got I got to put it in there. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, now we are on replay. Reached the end. Repa- re- no, we have not reached the end. Because we got another one after this. After, just, after replayability? I just thought about it. All right. All right. So, well, okay. so we're at replay. Re, we're at replay rewatchability. Ability. Yeah. Rewatchability. Okay. So, number one, the most rewatchable Batman movie for me. Not going to lie. It's 89. Okay. Number one. Okay. My, I'm not mad mo- at it. The most rewatchable for me is 89. I'm not going to lie. It's a I strong just, movie. Again, the way it starts with the with the Danny Elfman theme, um, the the build up. I love the build up before he's Joker. Like Jack Nicholson. Just on a side note, Jack Nicholson is my favorite Joker. Heath Ledger's is the best performance, yes. in my opinion. He's he gives the best performance of a Joker yes. on 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 screen. Obviously, Mark Hamill's. Go, but we're not even talking yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not even talking about that. But no. just in terms of acting on screen, Heath Ledger's is like the best performance. But Jack Nicholson is my favorite Joker. And I love the scenes before he's Joker. Like he's already the smoothest, coolest dude in the movie from the beginning. So like the, the first 30 minutes when it's the build up to it all, I love um, the whole... Like when when they're at the mansion and Vicky's like, oh, which one of these guys is Bruce Wayne? And Michael Keane's just like... Well, I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> I just love that. Like, he's just toying with people. And the fact that, like, there's someone who doesn't know who Bruce Wayne is. Yeah. And then he's so, like, into her. He doesn't even know what to do with his fucking pen. He's just like, and Alfred's following him around. Like, I, I, the way the beginning of that movie is is so dope. And, and Bruce is such a G. He's like, it's Japanese. How do you know that? Because I bought it in Japan. <laughs> like, like, that's my shit. Like, I don't know. I just, I love that movie. And then once he's Joker, Jack just runs with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And he has so much fun. Keaton is my favorite Batman. Um, the the scene in the museum with, with oh, Party Man by great. Prince. Like, epic. That's and then, awesome. and then like, the, the finale is, is kind of crazy with the parade. Um, and then... Even the ending of that film with him standing at the top with the the bat signal in the sky, like one of the best endings. The score in that scene is is epic. Like, you know, so I just yeah, from start to finish, I can watch Batman any day and okay. put it on. And and it has it's not too long, it's not too short. It doesn't overstay its like, welcome, yeah. Batman is just it flows so well for me. And I, I can always put eighty nine on, like no matter what. Okay. So that's that's my number one. Okay. Um, mine is Batman Forever. Mine is Bat. I'm sorry that yo I can I, and I think that's because I'm a little biased because that that technically is my first Batman movie I've ever seen. Well, there you go. Yeah, but nostalgia plays a big part. But in it everything. is very very good. Yeah, look at the start of that when they they first start they start off with Two Face, and he's and he and he's he's flipping this coin. Yeah, and he's just. 
Oh, the, walking the bank. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's he, a dope uh, yes, um, the, intro scene. Yes, yeah. and he's like, you counting on the winning Avengers yeah. to save you from <laughs> evil. <laughs> and it's like, oh, what is this? Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. I'm sorry. The start of that movie, the start of Batman Forever is probably the one of the best starts of a, of a Batman movie. Yeah. Because it gets right to the shit. Mm-hmm. It doesn't hold your hand. That's why I like Batman Returns too. It gets right to the shit. Yeah. Like he's immediately fighting people in the beginning. Yeah. The same yeah. way in, in forever. And it's like, oh, to start off with that, and then he comes and then he enters, and then the two is just it works, man. It works. Everything works there. Um but I just love it. The dynamic between Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey. Who the hell thought we needed those two together? Yeah. Nobody. Who? If somebody sat there and was like, you know who we need a movie with? Mm-hmm. Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey. Nobody would be like, how does that even work? Yeah. I'll give you that. How does that work? <laughs> they do good in that And movie. they work. Yeah, especially Jim Carrey. Oh, Jim Carrey's Riddler. My Jim sister Car- loves Jim Carrey's Riddler. Jim Carrey, they, I'm convinced that they gave him the suit and was like, your playground, you do whatever the hell you want to do. Oh, yeah. And he just was allowed to be Jim Carrey. I I have no complaints with with that. I, I thoroughly enjoy it when they go on that montage he flips the coin. We never know where it ends, but we know that they end up together. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, hey, Two Face, show me how to punch a guy. And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. And then he doesn't execute the punch. It's like, oh, that's so great. Yeah. So for me, Batman Forever, yes. Gotcha. Oh, and I'm not gonna lie, that ending scene is awesome. It is a beautiful ending. That scene. ending scene is awesome. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And that club scene is amazing. Sorry. The club scene is amazing. Uh, I'll give you that. Well, spoiler alert, Batman Forever is not in my top five. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. I just feel differently about Batman Forever no, than no, you do. But we talked you. about it at, at, at work. I'll but. tell you what, Batman and Robin better not be in that goddamn list. It is in my oh, list. I'm not going to lie to you. Hell no. Batman and Robin is, is on my list. <laughs> Now, where I put it, I'm kind of like <laughs> debating because I'm like, do I want to out myself right now? But um, no, I'm debating whether honestly, <laughs> you're going to hate me for it, <laughs> but I'm debating whether I put Batman and Robin at two or three, oh, but I can't in good conscience. I can't put Batman and Robin that high because Batman and Robin is a bad movie, but, oh. but it's, it's definitely so, one of those movies where it's like a guilty pleasure situation. It is. And I've always I've always loved Batman and Robin more than Batman Forever because of that. But um no, nah, I'm gonna say so yeah. No, my number two my number two would probably would probably be the Dark Knight. Because Yeah, me and you are the same there. That, and the only reason why I don't put the Dark Knight above eighty nine is because the Dark Knight is kind of long, and I'm not always in the mood for The Dark Knight because The Dark Knight has, it's the, I put The Dark Knight in like that epic rarefied air kind of film where like, like I look at it this way, like right, let's use MCU as an example, right? Okay. I think, I think in terms of just objectively, I think Infinity War is their best. Movie in the MCU, me personally, hmm. okay. And Infinity and, and Infinity War is a great movie. I I love watching it, but I would never just put on Infinity War first. Like okay. to me, okay. When it comes to like, I just want to watch a movie that I love. I put the first, first Avengers. Avengers. You already know because yeah, 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 the same, first same. Avengers, it just but everything it hits. everything hits everything and is, and yeah. the the interaction between the characters, everything like the Infinity War is so deep. That it's like I can only watch it when I'm watching the series, yeah, and yeah. I have to be like, you yeah, can't just turn that I, on. yeah. I wouldn't just yeah, be like, yeah, yeah. I just want to watch Infinity War today, yeah. even though I know it's the best one. Like, even though I know how epic it is, and Th- and Thanos is epic, like he kills that movie. But I just wouldn't put it on randomly like that. I put the first one on before I put a Infinity War on. Okay, and that's how I feel about the Dark Knight. But I don't feel that way in terms of like 
the series. Like I wouldn't, I can just watch The Dark Knight without watching Batman Begins first. I don't yeah, have same. to. I don't have to watch it in order. Okay, that's how good The Dark Knight is. But I also just wouldn't be like, if there's a movie I want to put on today that I haven't seen in a while, I'll put on The Dark Knight. I I wouldn't do that. But it's okay. so good that once I do decide to watch it, I'm watching it. I'm in. And like, like if it's playing, yeah, if it's just, just like, sit down oh watch man, it. I gotta watch this movie. Exactly. And every time I watch it, the reason why it's number two is because even though I wouldn't always put it on, whenever I put it on, I remember why I love that movie so much yeah. because. Each thing just builds, and I'm just like, oh man! And it never gets old to me. Like it's been almost 15 years, and it's not old to talk about how great Heath Ledger is. Yeah. Like it, it's never gonna be like, all right, we all know Heath Ledger's great. Yeah, I'm not. I don't feel that way every time I watch it. And it may be because he died, but every time I watch it, I just have to appreciate that performance so much. I'm just like, yo, this man. Gave it his yeah. all. Yeah. This He's man, this man, like just stole that movie. Yeah, he and dove into it, and I'm just like, yo. And, but that's where that's and, where my argument, for, and it's one of the best performances I've ever seen. No, that's where my comic argument, book or otherwise, like just a film performances. It's one of the best performances I've ever seen. I want to, I want like, disagree yeah. with you there. Like that's where my argument, but that's also where my argument comes. Where that's not a Batman movie, that's a Joker movie. Mm, got you. And I and I wouldn't even argue. I I wouldn't even. Yeah, like I get that. That's literally like that's that's. I, I if you want to say it's a problem I have with the Dark Knight, I would say that's a Joker movie. Got gotcha. you. Shit, first frame is Joker. Yeah. So I, I I would say that that's and I get why they they made that choice. Yeah. So I was gonna say that that's my number two. I can't. I can't. Your number two is the Batman. No. My number two, my number two is Batman Begins. Really? Okay. My number two is Batman Begins, and Batman two, and this is and this is something that I've recently discovered. Batman Begins is so underrated. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No one gives that movie. I sleep on Batman that Begins. I, I, yeah. But that movie is a great Batman movie. Yes, it is. It really is. Like the sh- the shots, the 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 hit, the training montage from him figuring himself out to turning into Batman to uh, it, it's just it, you know figuring out his his relationship with Rachel. It just works like yeah. Uh, his relationship with Gotham, mm-hmm. you know, like him and Alfred. Yeah, his. That movie is very much about him. Even him and his father. Yeah. It's very much about him and relationships in that movie. Yeah. Because, like, if you go through it, like, it it goes through the beats with him and his relationships and him figuring out, you know, where does he play a part in all of that. But the, 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 the action scenes, they hold up. Yes, they do. The action scenes hold up. And I sat there and I watched it and I was like, oh, shit, this is good. And then you get to see the quote unquote stealth side of Batman we've not seen yeah. in damn near any movie. Like yeah. if I'm being honest with you, Batman Begins was the first Batman that you actually got to see stealth. Yeah. Batman eighty nine, there's no stealth there. Batman Returns, there's no stealth there. Batman and Ro- ba- Batman Forever, there's no stealth there. Batman and Robin, there's no stealth there. Yeah. But Batman Begins shows up and there's stealth. And that is a big part of Batman. Yeah. That's a lot that that's a lot that people miss. He is like a silent assassin in that way, where it's like it does play an integral part into Batman. So in that sense, Batman begins would be my number two. Mm, okay. My number three, I respect that choice. I really do. Because I do sleep on Batman Begins, I'll admit. But my number three <clears throat> my bat- my number three is Batman and Robin, ladies and gentlemen. It is. And and the reason why is because when I was a kid. Nostalgia. Okay. It's because it's a kid movie. Yeah, yeah. And when I, mean, I it was made and for kids. It was made for kids. And when I was a kid, of the four, even though it wasn't my favorite, I could just watch it whenever. And and it and it just was like 
Okay. It's silly. Even when I was a kid, I knew it was bad. Like when I was a, I, it was, I was just like, oh my god, these puns are so terrible, and that girl's so forced, and yes. like a oh. lot of stuff, and Robin's just so annoying. Like this, his whole like, I want a car, and you just you just can't stand yeah. it. She it's, wants me and not it's you, and like not the same Robin. That, yeah, and I'm just it's like, not. I'm just like, uh, I'm not, I'm not feeling that at all. But I. But I can watch it. It's just it's so unapologetic in its tone yeah. and 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 who it and what it is, and it's not. And and the comedy isn't like, it's not cringy. It's just dumb. Like yeah. like when I watch it, I'm not like, oh god, turn this shit off. I'm just like, this is so it, stupid. Yeah, it doesn't work. But it yeah, makes yeah. me. But it makes me laugh. Like, in what other movie would Arnold be? That stupid and that silly, what? and 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 Uma Thurman is so like, she, and, yeah. even though she's great, but she's she's so overacting yeah. in certain yeah. scenes. Um, them two together in a scene is just- yeah. But I and and I like I had told you at work the things that save Batman and Robin for me, honestly, as much as he hates this role, I always enjoyed George Clooney as Batman. To me, he seemed like a cool extension of Michael Keaton like Val Kilmer when you watch it in order Val Kilmer in the middle just doesn't really make sense how do you go from Michael Keaton you turn into Val Kilmer and then you turn into George Clooney and that's all supposed to be one continuity it just doesn't really make sense to me but for some reason I can believe that Keaton becomes Clooney for some reason I don't know why but for some reason I I I buy it and I'm just like Clooney's Batman is 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 all right like he doesn't do anything too stupid it's everything around him that's ridiculous but Clooney himself as Batman actually gives it a good show and I and I stand by it to this day if Clooney was to do an older darker version of Batman Batman. like now like the way Ben Affleck did you think it would work I do I I think George Clooney would kill Batman now but he just doesn't want to and I get it I don't don't blame him he was banned from coming yeah he 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 hates it himself he's like (laughs) yeah I I stand on that I killed the franchise like he does that he takes so much blame for it and I'm just like it's not you man no it's it's definitely like the writing and that that, and all of Alfred's scenes are wonderful oh his his moments and George Clooney is in the majority of those scenes. Yeah. So it's like all of Alfred's like, you know, you've spent your life trying to control things and da 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 and what is Batman but an effort to, you know, control life itself and this, this, and that. And George Clooney's just like, But I can't, can I? And Alfred's like, None of us can. You know? And he's and he's yeah. you know, yeah. and then when George Clooney's like, I love you, old man, like you feel that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, like Alfred is about to die. Like that's how it seems at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, whoa, that scene is mad heavy in the middle of this stupid comedic yeah. like film. But that one scene is so like, oh man, like, yeah, this is like his dad. Yeah, like, like if he goes, this is all he has. Like Yeah. And even when they're even when they're fighting, like the when he tells Dick that like Alfred's dying. They have that moment where he's just like, I don't, I don't know, how, I don't know what to say. Yeah, and like Bruce is just like, I know, like, yeah, like, like you Alfred feel that, that guy. yeah, like Alfred, yeah. Alfred holds that film together for me. Like his scenes are so great yeah, yeah. that like I can watch Batman and Robin because of that. And okay. then when it ends and he's just like, we're gonna need a bigger cave. I'm like, that's so, <laughs> that's so Alfred. That's so. Beautiful, yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah, like I, I, I love it. Like let's wrap this, let's wrap this bow up. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. So that just the, and and the theme of family is so strong for me. So I just um I love a big family. So uh yeah, Batman and Robin is definitely my number three. It just is. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, my number three is the Dark Knight. Gotcha. Um, for all the reasons that you mentioned, it is it is definitely one of those movies. Much like the other two, if it is on television, or if it if, if it's on the screen or something, I'll sit there and I'll watch it. Like yeah. I'll stop what I'm doing and I'll be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna do this right now." Like the movie is that it, it's very strong and it's very it's very good. Yes, it very, is. Very, very good. Yes, and it is. I will second that on Heath Ledger's performance. 
I think it was he did it so well that it was to his detriment. Yeah, yeah, you know, and he delved really, really deep into that character, and but he did it so amazing. And it's not talked about enough, but Aaron Eckhart and Gary Oldman are also very good oh, in that 100%. movie. Oh, one hundred percent. They're both both of them are also yes. very very yes. good in that movie. You're only like as it's, it's as Aaron Eckhart's best role. Yeah, you're. You're only as strong as your counterparts. Yeah. So if Gary Oldman isn't as isn't a strong uh, Commissioner Gordon, and Aaron Eckhart isn't as strong as he is uh, oh, Harvey yeah. Dent, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. So it, it it definitely is a strong movie. My number four for rewatchability is the Batman. Okay. Is the Batman, and I I, I looked at it and I was like. I can't put it higher than the other ones because I I will sit down and watch the other ones. Whereas the Batman, I will say, it is three hours. Yeah. It's three hours. So if I'm going to sit there and watch that movie, I got to make sure that I'm not doing anything. Mm. Um, However, those three hours do fly by. But it is a good... Fuck a good. It is a great movie. <laughs> no, it really is. Like, yeah. They've got the tone... So well, the the back and forth between Commissioner Gordon and Batman, man, it's what I always wanted to see live action. Yeah, I always wanted to see that that interaction in live action. I told you before, mm-hmm. watching Gordon and Batman in the animated series, like it's like oh shit, they're just here, they're yeah. just working together. Nothing is explained. And the same thing with the Batman. Yeah. They're just here, working together. And it's like, oh, man, it's so good. Like, yeah, it, it's it's really good. I, I've watched that movie like seven, eight times already. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm about to go on my ninth or ten. So my, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so because I haven't seen the full movie, I can't in good conscience put... The Batman in my top five of rewatchability because yeah. I've, I've never watched it, so I can't put it in. Re- <laughs> I've never watched it more than once, so I can't put it in rewatchability. But for me, my number four, we're at four, right? Yeah. Yeah. So my four is Batman Returns, and on some days, on a given day, if you ask me, Returns might be my favorite Batman movie, and. Even though 89 is so great and The Dark Knight is an epic, beautiful film, there's a dark beauty in Batman Returns yes, yes. because, in a way, it's one of the truest Batman stories in a sense that like Batman's life is often very tragic. Yeah. And life just doesn't work out for Bruce that allo- in a way that allows him to be happy. Now, some stories have happy Bruce Wayne. They have, like, a lighter approach to it. Or he has, like, the whole Bat family and everybody's, like, working together. And, like, and it works. But those solo stories when he's just, like, I'm just trying to keep shit afloat. And I kind of want to be with this person, but I can't. And, like, you feel for the villains in in a way that you're not really supposed to. Because, like... The Penguin, like, and the reason why Returns, Returns is low for me, and it's more low for me now because I have a family, and I would never, like, my like my son's only five, six, he's only six years old, so, like, I wouldn't want him to watch this gruesome, like, yeah. Penguin, it's like, definitely like biting dark, somebody's nose and shit, like, and that last scene when he's like dripping the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, gush yeah, and the all moves, that stuff, yeah. and then like there's so many sexual innuendos in that film, like it's not a good movie for like the family to watch, which is why it suffered at the box office because it's like all the kids want to see Batman, but then Batman Returns is such an adult. Yeah, film in tone. It's the opposite of eighty nine. Yeah, like it's so far from eighty nine that like. It's like that's not the movie we thought we were getting, so that's why it did. You know, that, that's why they changed it. That's why he got that fight fired. That's why they went in the Schumacher direction. Mm-hmm. Like I get it, because Returns is a tough movie to sit through. But 
and I'm not in, I'm, and it's rare for me to be, because it's a tragic movie, I'm not in the mood to watch yeah. Batman Returns. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna, I don't want to be sad at the end. No, like, I I, you, you know, I so it's you. like, I'm, but when I watch it again, like with The Dark Knight, whenever I watch it, I know why I love this movie. Yeah. And again, Keaton kills it. I love the suit. I think it's one of the best Batman suits. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman is one of the best comic book performances to this day. Um, I, she's. I think it was worthy of an Oscar nomination, me personally. But she was. She's just great in that duality and that like. Yeah. I'm I'm lost yeah. and I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Like it's done so well. You yeah you feel it and and this, even in the scene like the scene when they're dancing at the at the ball and none of them have masks on. Like they don't have masks on, but everybody else does. Like yeah. the beauty of that is yeah. like because that is their mask. Well, that's the same thing that happened in Dark Knight Rises when they both right when him and Selena are dancing. And I and I truly think that was a callback to Returns. I, I, I do but too. Uh, the but the scene but in the that joint, but the, the the reason why that scene works so well is because they are wearing masks without right. wearing masks. Exactly. That's why that works because it's like. Oh. And they and they say it in the movie, like in Returns, he's just she's just like, I guess I'm just tired of wearing masks, and he's like, Yeah, me too. Like you feel a Bruce that's like worn down by all of that he's done, and and then when she's just like, like when he when he shows her the gun and he's like, Well, who do you think you are? And she's like, I don't know anymore, Bruce. And then she just starts laughing. You're like, Yo, she's just <laughs> she kills that scene. Like her acting in that scene is so great. And then like like I said like. The Penguin story is so tragic, even though he's like a really grotesque person, yeah. like inside and out. But it's because of this pain that yeah. he's felt from the being tragic. an outcast. Yeah. And then when you realize the true villain of the film is actually Christopher Walken's yeah, character. it's the one behind him. Right. Because I love that movie. He's I love, evil. And I love just... it because it works. It's the, it's the villain behind the villain trope. Right. You think you know the villain and you don't. The villain is actually behind him pulling the strings. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh man. And when he and when Christopher Walken dies at the end, I don't feel bad for him. No, I'm like you deserve it. Yeah, you kind of deserve that, yeah. bro. Like, that's <laughs> that's crazy. But when Penguin dies, I'm like, you feel man, that. that's that's kind of yeah. sad. Yeah. Like you know, so I think it's tragic. All of that is so, yeah. And then when and then when like again referencing the end of the movie when Keaton thinks he sees Selena and he's like, stop the car. And he's just holding the, the cat, and he's just like, damn. And then, like, and then the fact that she's still alive and she's there watching the, the bat signal, and he's just like, he's thinking about her, and he's just like, man, like, I was so close. Like, we could have just walked away and had a good life. Yeah. So, like, that's the tragedy. Like, that's what makes Batman such a compelling yeah. character because more often than not, Bruce can't have a happy no. ending. So, it's like, damn, that's the price of being Batman. Yeah. And I think. It's such a bold movie because it dares to go there. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, it's not as marketable. It's not as fun. But, like, I respect it for what it is. And barely any movie to this day is willing to do, to do that. what that movie did. Yeah. So I just, yeah, Returns is my number four. I got to I gotta, I gotta put it in there because okay. it's just a twisted, beautiful film. Well, so Returns is my five. There you go. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, yeah, go. I sat there and I was like, yeah, he's he's got it. He's got it. Listen, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Everything you said was spot on. But the fact that they were able to tell, like, what, three different stories in one movie? Yeah. And wrap a nice bow behind all three of their stories? Yeah. Is incredible. Yeah, and it, it, it balances those three villains people, very well. Because people... Let's be real. Movies nowadays have a hard time telling one story. Right. You just told me three stories. And the way they all blend together. And they blend so seamlessly. Oh, yeah. It just is incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, the movie is sad, but I think that's to its strength. Yeah. I think that's to its strength. And the the movie is just so good. The the, the score is is, is so strong. The atmosphere. I love that it's a Christmas movie. I love that I could call it a Christmas movie. Me too. <laughs> like it's just it just works. Like it everything just works around it, man. The duality of 
of Selena Kyle and Catwoman versus the duality and Batman and mm-hmm. Bruce. It works. Oh, yeah. you, they're the same person but different. Exactly. They're they're he has a code and she doesn't. Mm-hmm. But they're the same in the sense that they both have masks. They both don't want to be who they are in the public eye. Yeah. They really want to be this. So it's like it works so well. And I, I love, I, I got to say, I, I do love that movie, man. So yeah, that's my number five. Well, my number five, and I, I debated like for a while about this. But my number five would have to be Batman Begins. Mm. And... Because I was thinking about what movies are left, and I was at first I was gonna cheat because if I'm being honest, if we're including animated movies, but that opens up a big yeah. floodgate. But yeah. if we're including animated movies, even though I really love Mask of the Phantasm, if we're include, I I would put Batman Beyond: Return of the Joker because I, oh, I can I can watch that so I can watch that movie any day any day. So, but I I, I didn't want to cheat, so I was like, if if we're just going off the live action movies. Um, I had to go with Begins because when I thought about the movies that were left, again, I haven't seen the Batman full in full length, so I can't choose that. Yeah, and I'm never in the mood to watch Batman Forever. I'm just, I'm just being yeah, honest with you. you. I'm you. only watching Forever if I know I'm watching the whole series. Okay, like if Forever comes on TV, I'm changing the channel, That's and crazy. it's the only, and it's the only movie out of the first four that I feel that way about. That's if eighty nine comes on TV, I'm sitting down and watching. Batman it. and Robin is that for me? If Robin, if Batman and Robin comes on TV, I'll be like, I'll watch. I'll fuck it. Yeah. I'll watch Batman <laughs> and Robin. I'll laugh for a little bit, but forever, I just, I can't. I don't know. I just. It doesn't work for you. It just fine. doesn't work for me, and I'm never in the mood to watch The Dark Knight Rises. I'm no. only watching <laughs> it to complete the series. Out of all the Batman movies you could put on, who would first choose? Ah, uh, you know, I want to watch The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> what? Man, get out of my house, bro. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I just, I, I don't know. Because this, it's just as fun as that movie is in terms of Bane. Other than that, nothing about that movie stands out to me. So I'm just like, I, 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 I just, I poke holes in how stupid it's like can. there's so many things that don't make sense but to that's me that's why it's not a good movie because yeah and you that's can easily poke holes in it and honestly it's the only batman movie that i feel that way about because even though i don't like forever i don't go like that plot makes no sense when i watch the dark knight rises i'm like this doesn't what make the sense. hell is going on yeah. and it's the only batman movie i feel that way about so yeah. number five would be begins for me because um when I watch it again, it, it it it's like that. Oh, this movie's like really good, and I forgot how good this movie is. And I'm just like, oh yeah, I like this part. I like that part. This is cool. And I, and 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 I like that. It's I, I like that feeling of like, I have to remind myself that Batman Begins is a really good Batman yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's just a slept on one. Cause when it first came out, I liked it, but it didn't move me. And all I was doing was waiting for the sequel because the sequel had the Joker in it. Yeah. But when I watched it again years after the fact, after all three movies came out, and I'm just in my like There's marathon mode. There. Yeah, I watch it and I'm just like, wow, huh? It's like, I love the pace of this film. Yeah. Like it's it's actually really cool. I love the training. I love the flash. It's not rushed. I love the flashbacks with, um. With with his father, I think the guy, the actor who plays his father is really good. Yeah, I think portraying Thomas Wayne in that way, yeah. I cared about Thomas in a way I've never cared about Thomas yeah, Wayne yeah. before. Because but it in Batman shows Begins, I'm like, yeah, it shows a human behind the money, and, and it and it shows why Bruce is the way that he is. Yeah. And I remember that, and it's like the legacy that he wants to carry on. I feel that, and when and and Liam Neeson, I mean, come on, yeah. it's, it's Liam Neeson. Like and people forget like, I, like it's so crazy it's like oh Liam Neeson is in a Batman movie like he's he's, he's Ra's al Ghul guy. yeah like yo what yep. so I like Liam Neeson is great in that movie and then um you know it's not who I am underneath but what I do that defines me I love that I love that line 
And because he, that's a callback to what Rachel said to him earlier. Very cool. So I love that, and that's how you tell somebody who you are. Oh, when that's how you say. That's how you reveal your how secret you say identity. Something without saying it, like right? Because that contrived shit in the Dark Knight Rises, even a even a even a guy who puts a coat on a boy's shoulders and let him know that the, 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 the yeah, like, like that's man. that's mad extra. He told you that shit like <laughs> thirty years ago, bro. Yeah. Like that's not. <laughs> And he wouldn't remember like, that. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, that's that's fuck? mad extra. You, you, like, that's not how you do it. But the way he, he does it in Batman Begins, yeah. I'm like, like you that's expect dope. me to believe he remembered that? Shit? Yeah, like that's that's years ago. That's you such a, a dope callback, man. Right. Uh, I just I, I love <laughs> that. And then even 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 though it takes a while, when he first shows up as Batman, yeah. it feels earned. Oh yes, because you're like, I want to see him become Batman. Because yep. yep. no other movie really did that. Up to that point, because even in Batman '89, he's already Batman. So yeah. you don't really get the origin like that the way you, you do in Batman Begins. Nope. So I have an appreciation for Begins because of that. And again, to, I love a good ending. The way that movie ends is oh, so awesome. It's so. I good. never said thank you, and you'll never have to. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> that shit is crazy. That's such a badass line. It really and, is. And, and 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 again, that sums up who Ooh, Batman, Batman is. is. Like does you don't need to thank me. I'm doing this the because this is what I have Gotham. to do. Yeah, he loves his city. No matter how bad the city gets, he will never stop fighting for it. And that's that's another thing. It's it's, it's almost like he's fighting a losing battle. Yeah, but he knows he's he can't stop because the criminals won't stop. Oh he's yeah. Like okay, I'm gonna continue then. Yeah. Let's go. I'll do this all day. Yeah. All that's, right. That's my shit. So that's my five. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. Bonus. So what's the bonus ring? Costumes. The best Batman suits. All right. So yes. I just. All right. So. Let's so, go. All right. So I'm going to just say all five and then we can just like debate. Oh, let's so, do it. I'll do it too. Go ahead. Go ahead. The suit. Mm-hmm. Batman Returns is number one. I just love that Batman mm-hmm. suit. Low key Batman Forever is number two, and I don't even like that movie, but his all his suits oh. are good in that one. I think I think Forever is the perfect blend of the first two suits. Yes. Um. So, I, I, I yeah, I just Forever is dope. Mm-hmm. Even though we haven't talked about it at all, Batman v Superman. I think I think Affleck's Batman suit is fire. I didn't even know we were counting that. I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of cheating, but. We'll let you go with that. Go ahead. I, go ahead. Go ahead. It's I a, get it. I it's a dope suit. I understand. Um, wait, 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 wait. Which one? The the gray, like the black and gray. Not not the not the um, not the nightmare. That no. nightmare. I know. I know you love. I know you love nightmare. God I know. I know. Damn. But the, the, just the, just that black and gray, I like, like that, because that 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 promo photo of ba- of Ben Affleck in that suit is so like yeah. Like that's what sold me on him being cast as Batman. Yeah. Before I saw a single thing of the movie, I was like, "He looks oh, fire in that yeah, suit." Yeah, yeah. I'm like, "God damn, yeah, Batman, put Ben Affleck might be able to weight. do this shit." He put on some weight, and, like and, and again, like I told you in that in that trailer, even though it's not a suit, but that, in that moment, just when Ben Affleck is like looking up, like yeah. this motherfucker, like I'm gonna kill him. Like <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's Bruce Wayne. Like yeah, I yeah. fuck, I get it. I, I I believe it. Like Ben Affleck has slept on, but um, okay. Yeah, so that's the suits. All right, so that's three. Number four might be the Dark Knight. Um, and five, just because it's a classic, I might go 89. But the thing that I hate about 89 is that fucking point at the bottom. Like the wings, <laughs> the way that suit looks like, yo, that suit is that suit is number one if it has the returns emblem. Yeah, yeah. But the, because it has that stupid ass point, I'm like. I hate looking oh, at that, that bat, shit. The bat, yeah, the bat, the bat itself bat looks, looks off, weird. and it's crazy because the poster is just the the, yeah. bat, the poster for yeah, Batman doesn't not, have that it's one. It's not that. So that I'm like, bat is weird. I'm like, why didn't y'all fix that yeah, shit? That like, bat is weird. I don't oh know why. Oh my god! I don't know why he has that weird ass bat? Yeah, it's the only thing that kills it. Doesn't it for work. Me. Like doesn't 89 work. would be my number one if it wasn't for that. Like, I I, <laughs> I hate that shit. So it's the simplest. Yeah, I hate it. So uh, right. yeah, you're five. Uh, top five, uh, forever. I'm I'm on record saying I think forever has the best suits in yeah. all Batman anything. Gotcha. I'm sorry. Even Robin's suit is fire. The Robin's suit is fire. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Um, I got you. Batman Forever. Batman Forever low key has the best costume design. Period. Yeah. 
<sighs> Riddler suits, Two Faces suit. Yeah. Robin it, suit. It's so good. Yeah. Low key, everybody looks good. That's in what I'm Batman saying. Batman. Yeah. Batman Forever, Low key has the best suits ever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And there's no, there's no argument there for me. All right. Number two. Number two is Batman Returns. Okay. For me. Gotcha. So switch. I really yeah. like Batman. I, I love, I, I actually like Batman Returns a lot. All right. Number three is the Batman. Okay. That armored looking suit is so awesome. I always like, I don't know, for some reason, the armor look works for me. Yeah. It doesn't work for a lot of people, but it, it kind of works for me. Gotcha. Um, since you're cheating, I'm going to I'm gonna follow suit. Okay. I'm going to say the Nightmare suit. There you go. That's my number four, because that Nightmare suit is awesome. It is fire. I, I just It just wasn't in my top five. Yeah. But yeah it is fire. Um... See, this is where it sucks. Because I would have said Batman and Robin. If it wasn't for those goddamn bat nipples, I would have said... Yeah. I would have said George Clooney's suit. Yeah. But I can't. So, I'm going to say... Fuck, this symbol sucks. You know what? I'm going to say Batman Begins. I do like the suit in Begins. I'm going to say Batman Begins. Because I was going to say 89. But that... That bat looks retarded. Yeah. That bat looks so stupid. I I, I, I know. don't understand. I hate it. the way that thing looks. Because it doesn't work, bro. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't. Um, and I hate it every time I look at it. No, like, ah, you're not the only one. I want to blow what it up. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, we can do the quick hits on the description. I'm sorry, but Batman Forever, that first suit is... Exactly what you said. It is the perfect blend of one and two. Yeah. 89 and returns. Yeah. If they got combined, it, it is it forever. forever. Yeah. And it is a wonderful suit. But we're not even talking about the sonar suit, which is in the last couple minutes. That sonar suit is Oh fire. my goodness. Yeah. That is one of the greatest Batman suits I have ever seen. <laughs> I love that you love that movie. I really oh, do. Oh, goodness. I, it, it's cool. <laughs> it, it's cool. It's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because you don't feel that I way. I don't, but I, I love the suit, though. I mean, <laughs> like I said, Forever has its good parts. I just, I, and I think that's, I think that's why I don't like it, because it has so many good things, but it just, it just doesn't stick the landing for me. Like, it. But the, Batman and Robin does because for you? because Batman and Robin sticks wholly to its tone. You know what? You're Batman right. Forever. It commits. It commits. Batman Forever tries to have yeah. it both ways, yeah. and it doesn't. You're right. It doesn't work for me. You're right. Because I, I if I because I can find a tender moment in a comedy movie and be surprised and be like, oh, that's that's cool that they have that in there. But in Forever, it's like it's trying to be super serious, and then it's trying to be silly, but then it's trying to be dark. With like the flashbacks and the and the and the pain, and then it's trying to be like this romance with Chase and this psychological thing, like who you know, like who am I really? Am I Bruce? Am I Batman? I'm trying to, t and then Jim Carrey's in the corner doing everything he's doing, and it's just like it just doesn't blend as well for me. Yeah. Whereas Batman and Robin is just wholeheartedly what it is, and I think because it commits so well, I I can watch it more. Okay. But Forever is just it's trying to be everything, and I. I just, I, it just doesn't work Forever for me. It works for me. Yeah. Batman Returns, I don't have to say it. That is one of the greatest cinema suits. Oh, yeah. Ever. Yeah, Returns is awesome. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not debating that. And mind you, that's a, what, like a full leather suit? Yeah. And what's dope? He's wearing Jordans. Like, that's people don't a, know yo. that. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Jordan but Sixes. He's, yeah, he's wearing Jordans. <laughs> and I'm like, that's fucking fire. It's so hard. Of course Batman's wearing Jordans. <laughs> like, whooping ass with Jordans. I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, You haven't seen it, but when you do get to see it, you understand. The Batman, I got you. The Batman suit has this foreboding effect. Yeah. Almost like Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. You know when Darth Vader, you see that suit and you're like, ooh. Yeah. It's like, ooh, like it works. Yeah. But it's like also for, it's like, yeah, you can't explain it. It's just an overpowering feeling. That's that for me. Gotcha. That suit is awesome. 
And the fact that his his uh his bat symbol is detachable. Yeah, yeah, amazing. that's kind of fire. That's awesome. That's kind of fire. That's great. That's mm. awesome to me. Um, and I love the cow. The cow is very reminiscent of Adam West. Yes. Yes, it is. It's very, it's very. I respect that. Yeah. Like, R.I.P. to Adam West. Yeah. Legend. Re- yeah, rest in peace. Um, the nightmare scene. I never thought I needed to see Batman in a goddamn trench coat. And it works. Yeah. <laughs> My God, it works. It does. It's like Batman mixed with Blade. It's like, what the fuck? Wow, it works. Yeah. And it just looks so, so grungy. Like, it works. It works. And then, what was my number five? Um, begin- Begins? No. Oh, begins. Yeah, it was begins. begins. Begins is a great suit. Besides it being stiff, Begins is a great Batman suit. Especially for a first outing. Gotcha. Um, and yeah. Well, the wife's on her way, so we're about to wrap this up. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, the elevator. What? Is it a moving room? Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> so... Is the, an, an elevator a moving room? I don't know what I told you the first time you asked me this, but I, I guess, I guess it is because it's like, but it, technically the room doesn't. Well, that doesn't make sense because everything is being moved. So like, but like, it goes up and down. The door closes. I guess it's a room. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> the elevator is in a uh, moving room. I mean, but it only moves once you press the... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> are you in a room? Or are you in a... Because like, if you go inside a closet, is a closet a room? Just because it's an open space that has a door that closes? Like, well, is a closet a room? Well, I mean, you do have those open closets. Mm. Shit. <laughs> and I, they consider those rooms. Yeah. Well, you you know, you let us know. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, everybody who's listening is is an elevator a, a, a moving room. You let us know, and uh, also let us know how we're doing. Let us know if you like this. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave a rating, four stars, five stars, whatever you feel. Nothing less than four because we're trying to. Get this going, please. <laughs> I mean, be honest, but like, please, nothing less than four. But um, yeah, leave a comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. And if you're on Spotify, just like, share, save our podcast to your playlist, whatever you want to do. Um, it's on Google Podcasts. And if you're listening on Anchor, where we post our episodes up, um, you can support us uh, with a donation um, and you can follow us or whatever. Uh and just, you know, spread the word. You heard of Batman and Robin. Well, <laughs> this is Phil and Hill. <laughs> so uh, we'll catch you on the next time, uh, on the next episode. Be blessed. Stay safe. Uh, Phil, you want to say bye to the people? Yeah. Have a good time. And we'll <laughs> see you next time. Yeah. Catch you next time. <laughs>